Over the past two years, I have really come to realize the importance of mental health. How important mental health really is when it comes to our day-to-day -day lives. It affects how we feel, our actions throughout the day, what our body can literally be like. And I realized how poor my mental health was. So it really got me thinking, really got me wondering why. Why is it that our mental health is so poor that 80% of adults feel like they have poor mental health and higher in younger adults, in teens? So I spent a very long time figuring out that big question, why? What is it that we do that is completely destroying our mental health? And this is what this video is all about. The complete guide to how you can destroy your mental health. And you may be surprised about how many of these you do. I used to have a big problem. I used to feel literally depressed. I went through a very dark phase of my life where I was addicted to almost everything. Everything you could think of. Video games, but not like, like, oh, video games are bad. Like, I just was on it all the time and I didn't do anything else. Which in that case, yeah, that is bad. Drinking all the time, drugs even, just not really going outside ever. And only ever going outside if I needed to go out for work during my 9 to 5 job. I was in a very, very dark place. And I wanted to think about, about all those things that I did that did not help me. That kept me in that dark place. That kept my mental health poor. Porn. I think we all know that this is something that is not good for us. Mentally, physically... And the reason is, is because it's an image problem. That it has an imagery behind it. If you're the dude who's watching a, the girl of your dreams, right? Get it from another man, and you're the creepy guy who's watching it because you're lonely, bored, or just simply can't get any action of your own. That is such a poor mental image that you have of yourself. That you're the creepy guy that watches. It is not good for your mental health. I think we all kind of know this, like we all know that it's not great, I don't really need to go into much detail. I mean it's literally everywhere. And that leads on to my next point, social media. Look there is basically soft porn on every single social media platform. Even this platform, YouTube Shorts, TikToks, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube Shorts, Snapchat even, you can now view Snapchat Shorts. There is basically soft porn everywhere of literally kids of any age. That is how messed up it is. And it's because it's everywhere, it's now become standardized as normal. It is normal to see a slight bit of soft porn on some sort of social media platform. Yeah, yeah, it's that's normal. It's normal to go on Instagram, see something that's basically soft porn, and then go on the actual, <laughs> actual porn, and then <laughs> bust, <laughs> bust one in the morning. Like, that is viewed as normal now. Wow, that's normal? Imagine how mentally fuck that is how much that's mentally messing with your head not only that social media it's always overstimulating you it's always overstimulating your dopamine receptors in your head and frying them to the point where your dopamine receptors your body's dopamine system is broken it doesn't work properly it's so overstimulated all the time where you have a short attention span no motivation no exercise so you've been doing the first two habits you woke up in the morning and you couldn't be asked to get out of bed, so you went on the hub, you busted one first thing in the morning before you even got out of bed, and then you do get out of bed just to sit on your chair and scroll through social media for the next two, three, four hours, and you do that for the rest of the day. You get to the end of the day and you've done no exercise. The guilt that you will feel mentally is a lot. You feel guilty that you've not done anything today, that you've not had a productive day, that you've done zero exercise, that you've not even gone outside to get fresh air. You feel really guilty. Not only does your body take a take take a hit from that, from not getting any exercise, you're not proud of your body, you're ashamed of how your body looks, but mentally you're taking a hit from it as well. The guilt that you feel when you aren't productive, you know that you haven't done anything good today. It really does mentally screw with you. No emotional control where you don't have a good hold of your emotions at all. So in any stressful or any situation that hurts your ego slightly, 
you lash out, you blame others, you can never take any responsibility upon yourself, even if it's your fault. You will always consistently blame others or always think the negative in every single situation. You have no control of your emotions, so something stressful will happen, you'll lash out and then a couple hours later you'll feel guilty, you'll feel regretful, you'll think back to that moment. Having no emotional control and letting your emotions get the better of you can really, really make things more awkward in the long run, especially with relationships with other people, with friends, with family, in sexual relationships with other people. No routine. I didn't have a routine when I was during my very dark period in life. I would get up anytime, usually midday, stay in bed, get up, probably meet a couple of mates that we'd just go off and smoke a spliff together. It wasn't great. Yeah, I just got taken back to <laughs> flashback. <laughs> it was a dark period. It was a dark period of my life and um, I didn't have any routine. I had work, yeah, but that was it. No routine whatsoever. And to be honest, I felt completely lost in life. Compared to my days now, I get up and the first thing I do is meditate. Then I'll write 10 things I'm grateful for. Then I'll have coffee, a cold shower. I'll then get into deep work, edit, go out to the gym. Like I have a routine that I do every day now and I don't feel lost in life. I actually feel like I'm completing some sort of purpose. So if you want to absolutely destroy your mental health, don't have any routine. You like the feeling of feeling lost, don't bother trying to set up yourself up with a good routine that can actually help you. Have no routine. The nightlife. The thing is, this is probably going to be the hardest thing to try and quit if you want to change your life around. And it's also the easiest thing to give into. Do you know why? Because in modern society, modern day to day, it is weird if you do not drink, do not smoke, or do drugs. It's considered weird if you don't do any of these things, if you simply just want to spend more time in nature or focus on better improving yourself. That is considered weird. It's considered normal to smoke, to drink, to do drugs, to go out and enjoy the nightlife. That's considered normal. Do you know why I know this? Because I mentioned it to a couple of people that, oh yeah, no, I don't, I don't smoke. I don't drink. They looked at me and they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What do you mean you don't smoke, you don't drink? Everyone does. And I looked at them dead in the eye and I was like, nah, not me, man. <laughs> nope. I didn't know them very well, so it didn't really matter, but they were very shocked. And it just kind of showed me a little hint of what society is like. And it's true. It is weird that I don't drink when I tell people this, that I don't smoke, that I don't do drugs. I used to, a lot, but I don't people find out and they find that weird and they're like, oh, okay. But to be honest, I don't want to be classed as normal because how I felt when I was in that dark period, it sucked. I hated every single morning when I woke up with a hangover. I felt terrible. And I felt like the only thing I could do was drink more to sort out the problem. I hated what life was like. I didn't feel good, but it was okay because everyone else felt the same. Fuck that, I don't want to feel like everyone else then. It sucked. It, I felt horrible. My mental health was so poor. I didn't like how I felt. So I just decided I didn't want to be normal then. And that is the guide of what I did every single day that really made my mental health absolutely plummet. It's funny because you'll find that in this video, all the things I said are incredibly easy to do. Way easier than actually trying to fix your mental health. And that what makes it so difficult, how easy it is, how easy this guide will be to make your mental health shit. So if you are trying out there, you are actually trying to make your health just slightly a bit better. You're just aiming to improve yourself just 1% every single day. And if someone comes up to you and tells you like, don't, that's weird, don't listen to them, man. I can tell you as living proof from someone who went from that life to living how I am now, it's worth it. Trust the process. And if you are genuinely trying, don't give up. Hopefully this video helped you out. And if it did, I'd be appreciative if you clicked on the one in the corner because maybe this one can help you out too. Stay consistent and don't give up. Hey, alright, come here, self-improvement because mwah.